Our next chapter is focused on understanding how technology can deliver operational insights to help your restaurant become more profitable. Kenneth Kuo, the CEO of Ingest, will share his thoughts on the industry challenges, new trends, and how to avoid the pitfalls of traditional BI strategies. Kenneth, appreciate your time. Look forward to our chat today. Welcome, Kenneth. Yeah, appreciate it, Kelly. Thanks for thanks for having me. Um, you know, it, it's it's been uh, you know a, a really great experience, and and I think you're you're right. You know, when when we think about the data landscape for restaurants. Um, you know, it, there's, there's so many now different third party systems. There's, there's just incredible amounts of disaggregated, aggregated data everywhere you look. And, you know, especially with restaurants, you know, during COVID, you know, needing to run, you know, really lean operations, that disaggregation of data, uh, makes it, you know, incredibly difficult for restaurants to get a very good picture of what's actually going on, how profitable they are you know, how much labor they're actually using um, and how much neighbor labor is, is, is necessary. So, you know, I, I think uh, when we talk about connected data, that's something that I'm, I'm really passionate about. And, and um, you know, we, we as a company, as, as in Jest, have, have really tried to help uh, restaurants, uh, you know, solve this, this problem of data fracture. Yeah, and it's, it's challenging, right? And I think we live in, a, in a, a time of information overload. And so there's so much information. And, you know, and I think, you know, one of the positives that I've seen come out of, you know, again, not a lot of silver linings out of COVID, but one of the things I think that got recognized from an industry perspective is how much legacy technology was out there and how difficult it's been for, for operators and owners to really extract data that can really drive uh, get a get a glean into the you know performance of the business, but also help them make you know data driven decisions. Uh, and I think during COVID, you're starting to see more investment in the industry from a technology perspective, which is great. And you have a lot of innovation coming. But again, you know, best to breed kind of technology, and somebody needs to bring this all together. Like, what what advice can you give people when they're starting to kind of replatform or retool their tech landscape? What they should be looking at to make sure you know, that they're not having the same pains that they might have had prior. Yeah, I think the most important thing is for, you know, your, your third party vendors and, and your third party softwares to be uh, API enabled, right? Mm -hmm. They need to be able to have an open and robust API so that data can be, you know, read and written, you know, you know read by and, and written into by different systems. That, that I think is, is paramount because um, you know, if you have an open API, that means that the data can be exposed, it can be extracted, um, you know, by, by third party, uh, you know, data providers like, like ourselves. Um, but most importantly, it means that there's at least the, the foresight by these platforms to understand that they can't be stingy with their data and they can't keep it behind a walled garden. Um, and, and that's sort of been how the industry has has functioned uh, for so long where the, re the the data that you generate in a restaurant is not actually your own, which is just absolutely mind blowing to me. Yeah. Um, or you, yeah, like you, you, you generate all these sales, you punch in exactly what happens into the point of sale. And then when you get your point of sale reports back, it's just everything at an aggregated level. Like you can't even drill down into PMIX performance. Uh, the, you know, you don't have the ability to look at it by hour. Like, you're so restricted with what you get, um, you know, and, and the companies and the, the softwares that have API access or, or, or have a, a robust API, a developer API, um, means that at the very least, they're thinking about this problem in a way that, uh, uh, that, that makes it easy for you to go and grab the data. Yeah, and I think, you know, and in talking to some of the thought leaders, especially in some of the functional areas, you know, whether it be on the labor side or, you know, uh, you know, the hiring side and, and just talking to, you know, kind of the new and up, upcoming players in the market, uh, you know, I think that's a differentiator based on some of the traditional kind of legacy players out there, like you said, very closed off. And so, you know, if, if you're out and you're evaluating new technologies, you know, one of the key things is you have to understand how you're going to extract the data out of it. And I think that's just from kind of the technical piece of it and being and use that as part of your, you know, uh, selection of the technologies you're going after after. But then I think the other problem is, you know, or challenge or opportunity, I guess, is that we have so much data now, right? And so if you're, you know, uh, running a restaurant company, you know, small, medium, big, like, 
how do you take all this information and really, you know, transform it uh, into something that's a really, you know, an insight or an action that somebody can take? Because you could have managers sitting in the back office for hours and hours and hours mining through data with really no, you know, discovery, you know, path, just kind of hunting and pecking and not really, you know, using it to really drive a decision. Yeah. And, and that, that, that really um, sort of is, is uh, a, a fairly pervasive problem across the industry, right? Like you, it's, it's data overwhelm. So, you know, paralysis by analysis is what we used to call it at, uh, at, at Watson where, where I was. Um, so really data is, is only good is, is only as good as its availability and its usability. Right. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we like to think about is, we don't just provide data, we provide insights. So mm -hmm. how to actually make that data actionable and to provide uh, tangible next steps or tangible pieces of reporting that aren't just sort of the raw data spit back into your, uh, into, into a, a nice format. It's actually actionable metrics and KPIs so that you can make better decisioning around you know, running a, a, your restaurant more efficiently. I think, um, you know, where a lot of the, the and th this is a, a sort of a, a, a restaurant industry kind of specific problem, because I think, you know, a lot of the more tech forward industries have already sort of have, they've, you know, had years of experience using yeah. a variety of different analytics tools, you know, Tableau, Cognos, which is IBM products, like, um, you know, they, and Looker, you know, they understand that the raw data doesn't mean too much and they've made that investment in um, you know, third party analytics tools to be able to, 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 to use their data in a way that, that provides actionable insights. It's nice to see that some of our customers really start to, to take that kind of enterprise level data approach where you know, they understand that, yeah, I know we get POS reports, I know we get labor reports, but really that's just the data getting regurgitated to us. What we really need to do is, you know, use a, a third party like, like Ingest or, or like a Tableau to be able to connect all the different and disparate data centers, normalize all of that data, and then being able to take, you know, different pockets of data and put them together to come up with these operational insights. So, you know, I, I think, that's that's where we've been moving and that's or the that's where the industry has been moving and i think that's been um uh been been really beneficial yeah and i think like you said with all these different data sets right and so you know probably uh one of the challenges is having when we talk about like consistency across restaurants right and so uh whether it be different technologies or different ways that people update their pos you know, creating standards of, you know, that, uh, you know, a Coke is a Coke is a Coke across all your different restaurants, you know, that's a hard challenge to get by, right? That kind of, you know, master data piece. Uh, but with new technologies out today, there's ways on the back end to help solve for some of those things too. And, and, and I think that's been one of the stumbling blocks um, just for people to really kind of start to build out kind of this, you know, you know, enriched data sets, at least from my experience over the years of that was the hard, that was a hard problem to tackle to make sure everybody was doing everything the exact same way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And most of how the industry is sort of solved before is just throw it into Excel and just yep. FP and A teams and your accounting teams sort of pull their hair out. Right. And, and that's, I think one of the beauties of, of, of ingest, which is, you know, the, the software uh, it's that, our normalization layer recognizes that different point of sale systems, you know, it, it, any sort of multi-unit restaurant is going to have, it, it's, it's ridiculous to think that they're only going to have one point of sale, right? Yeah. There's going to be multiple point of sales they use across their different locations. Um, if things aren't entered correctly, we, through that normalization layer, know it. And on the back end, you know, nothing needs to happen. Nothing needs to get fixed on the front end. There's no sort of interruption to, you know, daily SOP, daily ops. Um, it's just, we make it much easier for the accounting team because everything is sort of exactly as you said, sort of a Coke is a Coke is a Coke. It's pre-normalized for, uh, for the data teams. And which is great. And that's where some of the advancements in, you know, technology has come. You know, I think traditionally over the years, and again, you know, been, been around the block for a while, you know, people talk about kind of BI and strategies around data and, and you know, traditionally there's an overinvestment and they fail uh, 
or, you know, they take twice as long as they, they should, and you don't necessarily get the outcome that you're expecting. Like, why do you think that's the case? And I know we've talked about some of the improvements of technology, but like how do, you know, what, if you're going to go and start kind of this journey, what advice would you give people to get started if they haven't started down this path of, of really creating, you know, an intelligence and insights platform? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's a good question. I think, um, <laughs> Um, you know, I, I think the, the first thing is to really honestly evaluate what your data sources are, right? So, you know, there's, there's, and, and this is something that you and I have, have talked about, which is, um, you know, what is, and it, you know, is there, and if so, what is the difference between keeping everything straight for accounting so that that sort of single layer, you know, uh, single version of the truth versus what do you need on an operational data level to be able to run your restaurants, right? Because, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, the, the restaurants have, have, you know, these FP&A teams when they, they're the ones that are evaluating these data tools, right? And so what they want is something that's going to be able to handle every single little accounting quirk. And that, I think is unless you're building a, a specific accounting tool, that's, that's going to be highly unlikely, but just because that that's not a possibility, it doesn't mean that all of your data is bad or unusable. It just means that when you think about operational data, there are really important pillars in that sort of data set that still allow you to, to, to function, even though not every single void or comp, you know, or sort of, uh, you know, uh, th there's not like a hundred percent data integrity. The operational data is still valid if it's 97, 98, 99% fidelitous. Um, yeah. So, so I, I think the, when restaurants uh, want to start that journey, I think having that understanding is, is key. Um, and the second is, you know, to be really honest and, and to do that evaluation for what are your key sources that you want and what your key sources of operational, like where your key sources of, of operational data come from. Um, and mapping out the flow between each of the different data sources is, is really important. And if, if they can't do that themselves, then there should be sort of a, you know, their data consultancies there, there are, you know, we're happy to, to, to do it for them. You know, there, there are softwares out there that, that uh, can take them through that, that beginnings of the journey. No, and I think that's a great point. And we've talked about it. You know, if you're looking for perf perfection in an operational, you know, data warehouse or data store, it's just not going to exist. Right. And you've got, you know, obviously you want, you know, integrity of the data so you can make, uh, the right business issue decisions, but it's not your, it's not your accounting. It's not your debits and credits tying together. Yep. Right? So I, I think that's great advice for, for everybody. Uh, where do you see, like, how do you start to see some of the, even the more advancements in technology? Cause you know, there's a lot of buzzwords about AI and, and, and machine learning and kind of predictive analytics. And I know your experience with Watson, uh, you know, that's the way the industry is going, right? Um, how do you start to see that play in this overall kind of, you know, in, intelligence insight strategy and, and where those technologies might play to help operators, you know, I mean, the end goal is to drive sales or, you know, improve margins or hopefully do both, right? And that's what yeah. technology should enable. Yeah, yeah. So I think, um, you know, the, the, the dream of, of machine learning, the dream of AI is ultimately to get as close to predicting reality as possible. Um, un unfortunately, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going to go a little bit technical, a little bit deep down the technical rabbit hole, but, you know, we're, we're going to expand out and, and I'll sort of explain it more conceptually. So, you know, uh, you know, there's basically there's classification and then there's prediction, right? So classification is, is basically like uh, it's uh, the, the most classic example is you think of like computer vision where, you look at a dog and then the computer sees the picture and it's like, oh, this is a, I identifies it as a dog. So that's classification. It's classifying this as a dog. Then there's, and you can generally get to like pretty high fidelity levels with that, right? So, you know, it, it's always, you know, the machine learning terms basically like above random, right? So 10% above random is 60%, you know, fidelity, et cetera. So you can get to, to pretty high levels of fidelity, 80, 90, um, you know, sometimes even 95%. 
unfortunately with prediction, that is uh, the, the fidelity goes down a lot, mostly because um, when, when you predict, you have, you have to do it over time. And so a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the, your algorithms are, are time series based, uh, which means that time, the flow of time, so from previous to, to sort of the, the future, um, has to be one of the variables. And that makes things really, really inaccurate and really difficult because of the natural spikes that you see in restaurants, right? Foot traffic, you know, the, you, restaurant data is so spiky. And what, what machine learning really tries to do is, you know, it, 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 there's a term called overfitting the data. You never want to overfit to the data, which means that you're reacting to every single little spike. So naturally, you, these, these algorithms are just not really geared well towards the spikiness of, of the data uh, within restaurants. That being said, predicting on a daily level what's going to happen is almost impossible. But what machine learning can do is it can help identify long-term trends. So if you were ingesting, you know, weeks, months, years of data, you're able to see over long periods of time. So, you know, call it over a financial period, over a month, you know, over a year, over a quarter, what are the sort of trends and behaviors that start to happen? And then most importantly, we can answer, are these trends seasonal, right? So if you strip out the seasonality, do these trends still exist? That's the kind of forecasting that I think that, that uh, you know, machine learning can, can really help restaurants with. Not on the day-to-day, -day, but forecasting future trends, identifying whether or not, um, you know, a certain uptick in sales is, is, is likely to be permanent because of X variables, uh, or it's just a, a random sort of, you know, unpredictable spike. That's, I think, where, where machine learning can help. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um... I know one of the other questions too, and it brings up to what you talk about, like immediate, you know, it kind of immediate improvements and benefits. You know, one of the things, you know, we always get pressured to do is to get data in kind of more real time, more real time data. And sometimes my challenge and pushback would be, okay, if you do your sales up to the minute, what are you going to do about it? Right? Like, it's great to see the ticker of the stock moving, right? But really, what decision point are you going to take? And, and, you know, I think it's important for people to understand that, there's a cost to real time data, right? And, and so, and then really understand how you're gonna, how you're gonna drive it. Would love to get your thoughts and insights on that as well. Yeah, totally. I mean, you, you know, if you're getting a data stream literally every second, it's exactly like you said, you're just watching the stock go up and down and up and down and up and down. It, that, it just, it's not helpful. Um, we, you know, when, when you know, our, our customers really, we, we, we say that, look, real time is always available to you. We can give it to you in as real time as you would like it. However, you know, in our opinion, using it at anything more granular than like a day level or like an intraday meal period level is, is probably too much. Um, now what can be useful is, daily retrospectives of performance by hour, right? So you, you can get down to that level of granularity, but to do it at a cadence of, you know, daily or weekly, that's, again, it, it, it's about, uh, it's less about the, uh, the frequency of data and more about the cadence of the data because you're collecting more sort of trend level data that you can see over a week. Okay, our 8 a.m., is uh, is really slow over this entire week and it has been slow you know every week this month but that's because it's the winter come spring our 8 a.m you know ticks up significantly right and so so that's where the the value is and and real time is is um uh is only useful um you know what again, it's, it's sort of this distinction real time in terms of like real velocity is not useful, but in terms of cadence, getting it at the real time sort of daily cadence that becomes really useful. Uh, you, you know, I think that's really interesting. I mean, I do think there's a play for real time data in a sense of if you're, it's a part of the actual transaction, right? So if you're dealing with loyalty or you're dealing with something that needs an immediacy, 
then that's yeah. where that's where real time data is, in, is is important to 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 do an outcome of a transaction, but not from an analytics perspective. Yeah, totally. I I, I agree with that for sure. So, Kenneth, I think you know data and insights and analytics really is going to be that glue that brings that entire connected restaurant together and. You know, again, what I'm really encouraged by is as kind of coming out of, you know, uh, with the new innovations of technology and new adoption of technology within the industry, seeing the restaurant starting to, you know, catch up, uh, still have a long way to go with some of the other, you know, industries that we've talked about, like, you know, retail and banking and, you know, even insurance of, of how much, how, you know, more advanced they are, not only the consumer technologies, but, you know, just the day-to-day technologies. And, and again, data and analytics becomes that foundation. But what I'm encouraged by is, you know, leaders and thought leaders such as yourself and in the discussions that I've had, that we've entered into this kind of new dynamic of collaboration of, you know, it's, you know, there's not one person that can do everything and technologies and, and, and partners in this industry they have to start playing nice together, right? And so there's competitiveness and, you know, everybody wants their piece of the pie, but for, to be successful as an industry, uh, having a new mindset that through integrations and through APIs and kind of this open architecture that people can start to, you know, expose data and have that much better experience for the restaurant. So, um, you know, you know, it's, it's awesome to, you know, to talk to people like yourself that are really with that same mindset of helping drive the industry forward. So thank you so much for your time today. Uh, if people want to get in touch with Ingest, what's the best way to go about it? Um, they can email me directly, Kenneth at Ingest, I-N-G-E-S-T dot A-I. Awesome. Again, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time.